movie from long ago. Hello, my friends. Here's how to make a Perry Logan show. You will need props. Many weird little props. You will need a trampoline. You will need a bookcase. The bigger, the better. You will need satire from the end of time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I give you satire from the end of time with Austin's beloved, Harry Logan! We doubt. We <laughs> thank you, enthusiastic and bare naked members of the Down with Capitalism Party. Whew. Hey, January 5th, 2012, and we are down on capitalism. It's uh, close to illegal. Uh, it's, uh, it's close to illegal <clears throat> to be openly. Bravely, jiggly, down on capitalism. <laughs> but I am. <laughs> see, see, that was my punishment. I was like spazzing out. It's kind of the ultimate white guy dance, right? That was the ultimate white guy dance I was doing there. <laughs> All right, I have been basing a lot of this show on a comparison and mostly a contrast with the 1930s. You see, we are, according to me and people who really know what they're talking about, such as Robert Reich. Yay! Big fan here, Robert. According to the people who foresaw the economic implosion, we're in a depression, an economic depression. Uh, people living in these times know this full well. Okay. And, but from there on in, the, the, the comparisons between the 1930s give way to almost nothing but contrasts. Or so I hear. Look. Looky here. Back... In the 1930s, after that big debacle, which was like ours, it was kind of like a case of capitalists run free, getting what they want, uh, not to be regulated, not to be controlled, and destroying the whole economy thereby. Seems to be their favorite trick, and they love to repeat it. And in the 1930s, they did it, but they paid for it. They paid for it. There were oodles of prosecutions and convictions of our banker friends. We love our banker friends. Well, mostly I'm sure they're cool. But we're not going to like attack bankers as a group. But you know, uh, the real uh, the economic implosion was caused by these people. It was caused by deregulation, you know. <gasps> it's as clear as black and white. The economic implosion was caused by deregulation. Repeat after me. The economic implosion was caused by deregulation. Come on, let's start saying it. The economic implosion was created by deregulation. The economic implosion was caused by deregulation. Yes, the economic implosion was caused by deregulation. What a godlike singer! <laughs> hey, it's not like I really think I can sing. It's a joke. But the economic implosion 
Go ahead, get a tattoo across thy broad brow. Get a tattoo across thy broad brow. Which saith, the economic implosion of 2008 was caused by deregulation. Now where was I? <laughs> but we were making with the contrasts. Nobody today is paying for it. No buddy. There, there, there are just a significant number of really bad bankers. <laughs> Not to attack bankers as a class. There are many cool people who are bankers, but we know there are a significant number of them who like a bust you on the body. You think we bust mucus, spittle, vomit, puke, urine, feces? We know. Okay, I'm sorry, I became psychotic, so... It's my show! Perry, I'm switching, baby! Oh! Hey, I'm sorry. Those guys go off so much, okay? But they're gone now. It's just you and me. Well, at the bottom of this is something not only not really funny, uh, that's, in my opinion, that's the thing about satire. It's you are, you are trying to be funny or somewhat funny about something that might be quite tragic. And at the bottom of all this down on capitalism stuff is the fact that basically uh, it's a study in contrast from the 1930s. Bankers uh, committed fraud in the 1930s and were to some extent, to a large extent, prosecuted. Well, of course, if you don't prosecute crimes, people will commit those crimes, right? Uh, you know, I'm not a political scientist or criminologist, but I'm pretty sure that if you don't prosecute a crime, people will start committing that crime. And so, a big surprise, you know, uh, we are now uh, uh, hip deep in corruption. Uh, you know, it's been three years with Obama and the Dems, and the banks are bigger than ever. There's more poverty than ever. The, the gap between rich and poor uh, is bigger than ever. In other words, the, the money is still uh, going straight up, straight up the stats on the Obamacrats are a bad, bad, bad. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Now, me and the band would like to play a number called The Stats on the Obamacrats Are Really, Really Bad. Maestro. Ultimate White Guy Dance. Ultimate White Guy Spaz Out Dance. Okay, we got that out of our system. Now let's just groove here and look at the air. Look at here. Here in the midst of a Great Depression, the biggest difference is nobody has paid for their sins. The crimes have gone on. The people who brought it down are still in charge. This can only be laid at the feet of Barack Obama. Good heavens, Holmes. These are the tracks of a gigantic neocon! Now back to the show. Listen to me. In the wake of Barack Obama. Thank you. In the wake of Barack Obama. All the significant stats are worse. There's more poverty than ever, more income inequality than ever, more innocent people killed uh, with killer drones than ever. Obama has earned the sobriquet drone president. What about that, Obama? I would like to thank the Academy for the sobriquet, the drone president. Now back to Perry. What a speech defect there, Obama. 
uh, there's a similarity, in my opinion, uh, between now and the 30s, and that is that we are down on capitalism. Yay! Well, in the 30s, they, first of all, they knew they were in a depression. Today, we don't know we're in a depression. In the 1930s, the bad guys paid. Now, the bad guys don't pay. In the 1930s, everybody was openly and honestly down on capitalism. I think it, it, was, uh, it paved the way for the New Deal. Quite simply, capitalism had to be controlled. That was the New Deal, kind of in a nutshell. You had to have government do certain things because the capitalists would, well, screw it up. Just look at us today. They screwed up everything they were given uh, control of. Uh, capitalists were given no, I'm so excited. Capitalists were given control of our media. And now you can't believe a word. Capitalists were given control of our food and crops, and now we just can't trust what we eat anymore. Capitalists, well, they also just pretty much hacked into our government. Since the Reagan days, they hacked in there, and, well, come on now, they really have undone the New Deal. I, Perry Logan, have the misfortune of having lived uh, most of my adult life during a period of unraveling for the left. Aww. That is just so sobering. Oh, it's so sobering. In the midst of our uh, joys and jests, to see that, uh, uh, well, most of my adult life, uh, I just got to watch the whole uh, New Deal thing unravel. I think the lesson in the, the contrast between now and the 30s, well, the biggest lesson, is that the uh, bad guys, in, in my opinion, the uh, bad bankers and the uh, the uh, one percenters and all, crooked government people, yeah, the bad guys. Was they learned from the 1930s, and the rest of us didn't. Or if we did, we did not apply it. The uh, bad guys, okay, I'm sorry, evil bankers. Let's just imagine evil bankers going, no! <laughs> one percent. Uh, they learned from the 1930s. They, they saw, well, uh, if we want to have this party again, we must make sure they cannot uh, send us to jail. We must, uh, I don't know, mess up the government, rot the government from within, uh, suborn the government. Uh, it would also be really good if we suborned and took over and controlled and twisted the media. Hey, we love the people in the media. They're kind of cute. But we mustn't believe a word they say. Listen to the media news, my friend. That will cause your IQ to plummet precipitately. <laughs> Ultimate white guy spaz dance. Well, uh, the, a short encapsulated version of the last three decades is that the bad guys have uh, they've just gamed the system. And so instead of a record number of prosecutions from Eric Holder, Eric Holder is the guy who should be doing this. And some say he should be impeached. <laughs> if Fox News can do it, I can do it. Some say Eric Holder should be impeached. Hey, this is fun. Some say Obama should resign. Oh! The stats that really matter about the state of the economy, the state of the Constitution, uh, those stats are worse. Most, many of them are worse. <laughs> worse than they've ever been. Do you get this? Okay. And so... People really are down on capitalism. That's what Occupy Wall Street is, among other things. And, it, you know, it has the right panties in a wad. Yay! Hard to tell with people whose panties are always in a wad. Oh my God, Perry's turning to a monster as he salutes his white wing cousins whose panties are always in a wad. Not questioning your masculinity in any way. I know that gets your panties in a wad. <laughs> okay. Hey, 
This show is like a disco, right? <laughs> this show is like a disco. Okay, disco's over. Well, uh, it ain't no disco, is it? Uh, that 99% uh, of us are now aware we're being short changed by capitalism. It's really, you know, it's kind of focused on Wall Street. Uh, pretty much, you know, that's the epitome <laughs> and the heart of capitalism. So what do we get? Wow, we get uh, Occupy Wall Street. Now that, my friends, uh, is down on capitalism. Okay. And uh, they really were, of course, uh, famously, uh, historically, down on capitalism relative to the U.S. You know, we're a country which is mostly gung-ho to, I think, an absurd extent on this most pernicious of systems, capitalism. Uh, when capitalism goes bad, people get down on it. And they got down on it in, in the 1930s. That would have had, would be the heyday of leftists of the leftists in America. Let's just say in the last couple hundred years, I'm pretty sure that 1930s were a pretty radical uh, decade for the US precisely because capitalism would seem to have failed. As it periodically and more and more frequently and more and more catastrophically does, but never mind, <laughs> you might think I'm down on it. Hey, are you down on it? Hey, are you down on capitalism? Well, you better be. Now, here's the situation, though. The bad guys in the 1930s learned from history, and they've gamed the system terribly, and, among other things, gotten together and created a massive propaganda machine, the likes of which have not been seen in this nor any other parallel universe. Not to be hyperbolic. It was, okay, it was hyperbole. <laughs> Well, with that, armed with this great propaganda machinery, uh, one cannot say anything critical of capitalism uh, and get any corporate backing. <laughs> you have got to think about what a corporate society we live in. It, it, controlled by corporations. Everything is controlled by corporations. If you write a great novel, if you write the great American novel, uh, you pretty much have to get a corporation to agree with with you about how great it is. Mostly, you have to convince somebody they can make money on it, you know. It's the greatest American novel. But if you can't convince somebody in this day and age, a corporation, and a very corporate corporation, okay? There. A very corporate corporation decides what novels we read decides what news we see, decides what clothes we wear, decides what music is cool, decides uh, even the critics of capitalism. There are some folks, and I love them, folks like, uh, well, the people on The Daily Show. There's a, there's a show called The Daily Show, and there's a Stephen Colbert and a John Stewart and comedians and all kinds of cool people. I love these people, but think about it. Every single one of them has been given corporate approval, otherwise we would not hear them. Someone figured they could make money off these talented and wonderful people. And they were right, I guess. So it's not to take anything away from these good folks, but that it's just to look at the system we have. You know? If you're reading a novel which has been highly praised by critics, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Please do. Uh, but it, you're only reading it, you see, because a big old, really, really corporate corporation, you know what I mean? Hey, you know what I mean when I say a really corporate corporation? You know, obsessively fixated on short-term profits. Obsessively, perhaps insanely, even sociopathically committed to short-term profit. That would be the a corporate corporation, and these are the ones who are like, you know, filtering through all the literature that's written. I'm, I'm okay, I, okay. That's why I love Channel Austin, and I love the internet, and you know that corporations want to chop it up and make money off pieces of it. That's what's going on. And uh, I think we're down on capitalism, as evidenced by Occupy Wall Street, but 
the rights control of the media, the corporate control of our media, which is all right wing now, makes it virtually impossible to get the word out on how we feel. We're kind of in denial that it's a depression. We're in denial that we are in an economic depression. Furthermore, uh, we, they are trying to get us to deny that we're down on capitalism. I think. That's, that's my thing. And you know, I'm down on capitalism. I think the people in the 1930s were able to react in a far more straightforward and intelligent way. <laughs> they were down on it. You have, at least theoretically, you have an eight-hour workday partly because of the Communist Party. It's a historical fact. That's how left we were. Okay. And while I cannot claim to be, I really am not a Marxist, I would probably uh, flunk a simple quiz on Marxism, okay? <laughs> I'm not really a Marxist, but I'm really down on capitalism because I'm a normal guy. So, part of the message of this show is it's okay to proudly be down on capitalism, okay? Come on, everybody, let us proudly be down on capitalism and do the ultimate white guy spaz dance. <laughs>
it, to have anything happen, you have to get corporate backing. You can imagine how sad this makes me. Oh. It, it's sad enough to make me do the ultimate white guy spaz dance. Which people can't get enough of. Hey, don't try this at home. Perry is a professional.